Okay, while the RTX 30 series launched with a theoretical price to performance or price slash performance increase over the previous generation, in practice, uh, markets simply priced all 30 series cards above the 20 series for a long time. Well, sorry, the market, I didn't see that there. Uh, do you expect the same thing for the next generation GPUs, something like a street price of $3,000 <laughs> plus for the RTX 4080? Well, I don't think it'll be that extreme, but well, there's a lot of things to talk about there really. Yep. Uh, I think we'll just go a bit back and forth on this one because yeah, there really is a lot to cover. So I think, first of all, I think it's fair to say the heavily inflated prices that we've just seen over the last near enough to two years, I suppose, I don't expect that to be a thing based on the fact that, it, well, pricing is falling down and I don't expect with the new generation that it'll go back to where it was. But I do think it's fair to say that pricing will be a little higher. There'll be some price creep compared to yep. what we've seen for previous generations depending on a few things, but I think they'll at least start out hoping for, there'll, there'll be strong demand for next generation products because I people so. are already starting to hold out for them. And that's just the way it always is, right? Whenever yep. there's new exciting products, people hold out for them and get excited about buying them. And there's a great rush. So we've always seen at least a two week period where you cannot buy the newest, latest, greatest thing because people are just rushing and tripping over each other to get their hands on it. But yeah, so a bit of price creep. I think the next generation will be a little bit more expensive because of what AMD and NVIDIA have learnt with previous generations that people are willing to spend a lot of money. I do think, though, that you know the mid-range to low end, those cards will still exist and they will be somewhat reasonably priced depending on your opinion and outlook at that. I think, if I had to guess, and I don't really want to, but the RTX 4080 class product, what would you say? I think that it was $700 for the previous generation, which we were really happy about, but then it wasn't, yeah. as the question points out, it wasn't really. Do you think that product's going to get to eight, nine $900,000? I mean, if you ask me straight away, I would say around the pricing of the TI model, which is $1,200. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably where that sort of class okay. product will sit for the next generation. It's creeping so, a bit higher than I thought, but yeah. I mean, that's just a guess. Sure, sure. Right? I, I, don't, I don't know mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, I think what we saw last time when NVIDIA attempted this sort of thing, the sort of not improving price to performance significantly was the Turing generation. Mm -hmm. So we saw the RTX 20 series come out and most of the products like the 2080, 2070 were fairly similar in price to performance to Pascal, but then they launched the the 2080 Ti, which mm -hmm. came up $1,200. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of started this price creep. But the, I guess the justification NVIDIA had was features like ray tracing and DLSS, which are not going to be new features for the 40 series. You know, they're already in those GPUs. And I don't, well, you, you never know what NVIDIA is going to do, right? But <laughs> what's the likelihood they're going to have a feature set like that to justify not improving price to performance? So I think... I find it hard to believe that we'd see stagnation to the level of Turing. I don't think Turing sold as well as NVIDIA was expecting. Certainly not as well as, you know, Pascal, the hype wasn't there, etc. Not as much competition from AMD. So, yeah, I'd be surprised if price to performance didn't improve. But I totally agree with you when you sort of say that the top-end products are going to be more expensive. Certainly the, the 30, the you know, the 80 class... I would expect to get more expensive. And Especially just going like to... a TI or a 3090. Look, yeah. I, I won't be shocked if there is a $3,000 product. Yeah. At least $2,000. We've seen, They won't go backwards from this generation in terms of MSRP. So, yeah, I do think a, a something that's well over $2,000, probably up around $3,000. I think that's possible, but that'll be well beyond the point of diminishing returns, like what we already see with the RTX 3090. So I don't think that's too much... Too much of a concern. That's not worth yeah. wasting too much energy on. We really want to see those sort of mid tier, those sort of the high end parts that make sense, the mid to high end. We want to see them being quite competitively priced. And again, that will, there's so many things that are yet to be seen. Like, first of all, what kind of performance does the next gen hardware bring? All the rumors and hype and stuff suggest that it'll be quite a significant performance uplift. And I have no reason to doubt that. How competitive will AMD be with NVIDIA? Just sort of depends on. Yeah, because basically NVIDIA want to generate the sale at the high end. Yeah. But if AMD come in with something that's much more cost effective and really impressive in terms of performance, those people that are always going to buy NVIDIA will still buy NVIDIA, but they'll be swaying a lot of people over to the AMD side. So then they want to make sure that they're not 
having to do huge price cuts, you know, very early on and things like that. So hopefully it'll be fairly well thought out and there'll be some good mid-range offerings. Yeah, I think when we see, you know, if we do see significant performance improvements, like mm-hmm. for example, if the 4080 was in excess of 80% faster than a 3080 type product, mm-hmm. and a lot of the rumors are sort of whether they're accurate or not, you know, yeah, they're, they're, su- they're suggesting subst- like Let's around double the performance. Yeah, yeah. But if we say like 80% more performance, I, I don't think it's out of the realms that a 30, the, the 3080 today being $700 MSRP creeping up to $1,000 plus. Not at all. It, you know, Yes, it's a more expensive card, but also the performance has increased significantly. So I, I would expect that we're going to see quite a lot of that happening where a lot of the the classes that people like to talk about where, mm-hmm. oh, I'm buying a you know a 60 series GPU is much more in line with the, the performance that we see from a, a 70 series GPU mm-hmm. because performance has increased by so much. Yep. So I would expect that, yeah, these companies are going to try to capitalize that and really muddy the waters for people so that, mm-hmm. yeah, a 3070 previously cost 500 might now cost 800 but then you're getting way more performance than you would normally see from that generational uplift so yeah there's something to something to look out for but as you said you know the pricing for a 4090 4090 ti doesn't really matter that much unless you're a super high and buyer like it doesn't matter if it costs three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars what we need to be looking at is the you know the 4060 4070 where are those sitting? What are the performance improvements that we're getting? Mm-hmm. And like I said, I'd be very surprised if we didn't see some sort of price to performance improvement for the MSRP. But the other question is, that's relevant to this, how long will AIBs just go crazy with pricing again and, and do what this commenter was saying, whether it's like, you know, they take the MSRPs, which improve price to performance, and then just raise the level to a level where the price goes up and there's no price to performance improvement anymore. Well, that's a supply and demand thing. And the reason they were able to do it with the previous generation was largely because cryptocurrency mining. So yeah. unless we see another uptick in that shortly after the release of the next gen cards, then it, it will be primarily gamers that are chasing after these products. Yeah. And if that's the case, then it would be like just any other GPU release in history where there wasn't a cryptocurrency boom. And that means gamers with the deeper pockets go mental buy up all the initial stock and for a period of time they're unavailable or if they're available it's at sort of scalper prices or inflated prices from distributors slash retailers and historically like we've seen this time and time again and people always jump to conclusions i think even like mid-range pretty i don't want to say uninteresting but like the rx 480 for example wasn't like pascal type hype like a, a gtx 1080 type product and that was still unavailable and even the gtx 1060 from memory they were still availability was pretty scarce pretty sketchy for about four weeks before we sort of the channel caught up and you could they were readily available but two weeks is the minimum so it's it's yeah don't draw any conclusions don't lose any hope if they're unavailable for at least two weeks because that's almost certainly going to be the case and i think after having come off the back of what we just have it could be as much as two months possibly more yeah possibly from from game of demands so we just have to sort of fingers crossed that other factors don't play into this launch yep. so the, yeah there are other factors so hopefully you know the supply issues you know cryptocurrency obviously one aspect but hopefully the supply chain has improved from the sort of covid period that mm-hmm. we've had which has hurt things a lot and then yeah, I, I would expect as well that th- those lower tier cards, like the 3060, well, which would be 4060 tier-ish cards, mm-hmm. will take a long time to come to market. Mm-hmm. Um, we've just seen the 3050, I think, take over 12 months. Was it nearly 18 months to come yeah. out? So, you know, we're not going to be expecting the, the more value-oriented products to launch straight away. And I think that's another point that people need to sort of just it's always happened you know the the cheaper cards don't come out straight away Mm -hmm. but i think we need to sort of get used to that time period lengthening and you know if you don't get your 300 or 400 dollar gpus straight away at launch and they might be launching all those two thousand dollar products straight away it doesn't mean they're not going to come out Mm -hmm. so again that's also going to make the whole generational price to performance improvement discussion quite challenging if they're not launching the value more value-oriented cards straight away yeah it's a big gamble it, it all it always has been to a degree but it's a really big gamble at the moment because you know, not that long ago card pricing was absolutely absurd and while it has improved significantly it's still by normal standards quite absurd 
Yeah. But in a month or so, if we start getting, you know, RX 6600s and, you know, the equivalent GeForce GPUs, RTX 3060s, 3060 Ti's, if we start seeing those cards hitting MSRP, even maybe, you know, dipping below MSRP leading up to the next gen cards, for those people who have been really holding out, do you think, okay, well, the next gen cards are arriving, but it's probably going to be a few months before they settle down in price and are actually available, best case scenario. And then it's a few months after that before the tier that I'm actually interested in is released. And then there's probably going to be a lag period where they get snapped up as well. So am I looking at like a six month window here before I can get that next gen card at a reasonable price? So do I just, rather than take that gamble, buy now while I know I can, because in six months from now, we've seen... Who knows where the state of things will be in six months? I'm certainly not going to even try to predict that. But I'm not advocating for doing one thing or the other because it absolutely is a gamble. So you're best off weighing up your options. How long have you been holding out for? What actu what level of performance do you actually need to in enjoy gamers, play with friends, do whatever it is that you're trying to get out of it? And if it happens to be that, you know, an RX 6600 or you know, RTX 3060 MSRP allows you to do that, then it might be worth just doing that and waiting six or 12 months and seeing what the options are then. I, th I certainly think it makes more sense for the lower tier products, yeah. mid-range and lower, because those I'd be surprised if we saw those cards in 12 months from now. Um, it would certainly, you know, e even in the Turing era, it took, I think, about six months to yeah, get the 2060. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say if we'll see a repeat of that, but it's absolutely... But it's not going to be straight away. No, it, I would say at least six months. So I think. So I agree. For, for high end buyers, it's you know, that's more of a time when you might consider waiting. And I talked about this recently in the GPU pricing mm. update, where I think if you're going to be buying into the thirty eighty tier and above, you're spending so much money doing it now anyway. Yeah, you're spending a lot of money. Mm. But what we saw with this current series, the thirty series, just before launch, is people started offloading their old GPUs on the used market. <laughs> you know, we saw 2080 Ti's selling for like $500 used once the 3070 was announced at $500. Mm -hmm. So there could be an opportunity for people to capitalize on that, buying used cards for a little, for that sort of period just before or just after the announcement, but before the cards are available. And, you know, if you're willing to make that gamble that stock is going to be poor and availability is going to suffer like it has the past 18 months, then... You know, it might make sense to jump in and buy one of those used products from the previous generation. So there's certainly a lot of options you can take with this upcoming generation to sort of, depending on your circumstances. So definitely lots of stuff to get excited about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about. A lot still that is a bit unknown. Uh, and ultimately we can't give you any concrete <laughs> answers on this one, but it's an interesting topic and we really could go on and on and around and around, but I think we've probably spent enough time on that yeah. one. So we'll move on.